Hello, everyone. This is Zayami from FilmFestivalCircuit.com and the assistant director of the Oregon Documentary Film Festival. We are gearing up for our spring 2023 session, which is going to be on March 12th at the Clinton Street Theater in Portland, Oregon. Uh, and today I am talking to a very talented filmmaker who has a very impactful entry in the festival. This is director Matt Lentz with the film Bleed For Me, The Art of the Deathmatch. Thank you so much for meeting with me, Matt. No, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, so let's jump right in. Uh, you, your film is provocative, disturbing, very entertaining, and even inspirational. I want to know what inspired you to choose this uh, subject to document. Uh, so interestingly enough, uh, this uh, film came out because of like a uh, like a loophole. So uh, uh, my uh, friend. Uh, and the star of the film, Casanova Valentine, uh, Christian Salvatore Toronto. Uh, we were trying to figure out how to uh, do some like uh, artistic immersion experience and kind of like have them at venues at bars. So we we had this, you know, he had this idea to kind of stage fights in bars and the patrons would be like the spectators. You know, we were trying to figure out, you know, what would be a good way to get around that. Because, uh, you know, if you have any sort of like matches uh like boxing or wrestling anything you have to have like the gaming commission you have to have some like health uh professionals on staff and stuff so you know i found this creative uh, loophole that if i said i was filming you know these spectacles and these events and these like uh staged choreographed fights uh it we were filming it and it was for a documentary so that uh, kind of got around all of uh, the legal issues of us having to have health professionals and, you know, everybody that was supposed to be there. So I threw the loophole and I started shooting this and I was like, why aren't I actually shooting a documentary? You know, cause I was just kind of filming the matches. And then, you know, as the story progressed and, you know, it started picking up steam. We went from like the first couple of shows to having 10 or 15 people there. And by the fourth show, there was lines out the door in Brooklyn. So. Wow. Okay. That's, that's very interesting. So you're, you're shooting a, a sort of a fake documentary to get around something. And then you thought, well, holy, holy cow, I should just yeah. use this footage and turn it into something. I love that. That's, uh, that's definitely yeah, a unique definitely. story. <laughs> uh, well, so I kind of want to know what is it like um, actually being near that content and filming that and, and, you know, you have to get up close and in the documentary, people talk about splashback with shrapnel and, wearing goggles and stuff what's the i mean what's the energy like when you're out there filming yeah i mean uh, i mean it's gives you like a new like lease on life because you know you're so close to you know obviously you know these matches and these fights they are choreographed but there's still like improvisation which happens you know in them you know and sometimes uh a light tube uh breaks and a piece of glass is gonna like you know, hit you in the face and then you're, you don't know if that's your blood or the blood of the other performers. So, you know, just filming it was uh, just one of the most like, you know, just, I was like captivated and just, you know, it, it was a rush to say the least. <laughs> Absolutely. I can imagine. Um, so what kind of, what kind of challenges did you face making something like this, both technical and also in terms of, uh, you know, you're close to these people, you want to do them justice. What, uh, what was that process like? Well, yeah, I mean, telling their story was, uh, you know, just a big part of the documentary. And, uh, you know, this documentary more or less is actually kind of like a pilot um, episode for a possible like series that's going to like uh, dive deeper in with each of the performers and workers, you know, and just kind of, you know, uh, give a little more insight individually, you know, if it was like a more of a series. So. Uh, with this, just I want to just make sure I told their stories, you know, truthfully, but I also didn't want to give away too much of the narrative of like how they put the fights and matches together. So you could still have that suspension of disbelief, you know, when you're in a bar or next to the ring, just, you know, watching these uh, matches take place. So Totally. Well, yeah, I feel like that is that is, remains the mystery is how they're able to <laughs> do all this. And I, I think you do a good job of, of balancing that real, you know, personality, getting to know these people and the spectacle of their performance uh, where the where the trick is not revealed, so to speak. Um, so what I mean, so you're going to you're going to turn this into a series. That sounds great. Are you working on any other documentaries or any other stuff uh, related to this? Or do you have any other uh, projects in the works right now? 
Well, I mean, for projects in the works of, you know, I'm 38 years old and I actually just got my first uh, full-time job because I was running my own uh, uh, production company based out of Brooklyn, but recently relocated uh, just to be closer to some family in upstate New York. And now I'm working at a uh, sports agency, uh, not sports agency, sports organization, uh, filming pieces for the Rochester Americans and uh, Nighthawks, the professional lacrosse team. So, so my projects have been kind of uh, showcasing like uh, some of the players and some of the, you know, charity and stuff that they're doing. Because I was taking a break just from uh, enjoying my life too much, apparently. So, so now, now I'm do, now I'm gonna grind doing forty hours a week. So because I've had all the time in the world to make, uh, you know, my own pieces. I did a documentary about the rebirth of pinball uh, several years ago called Replay. That was uh, kind of a slice of life piece, similar to this documentary in the sense that it kind of just showcases and illuminates on just a little subculture happening uh, in the Brooklyn, New York City area. So. So I've had all the time in the world up until the two months ago to do all the pieces and projects I've wanted. Met all my career goals, so now I'm just kind of hanging out and, I don't know, working 40 hours a week for a change. Because <laughs> I, I was enjoying yeah, my life too much, so now I'm working hard. <laughs> it sounds like a refreshing perspective. And, uh, you know, it's cool that you're doing stuff for sports organizations because the way that you treat the subjects in bleed for me, it is kind of like those player profiles like you'd see on ESPN or something. I mean, it's, there's crossover yeah. for sure. Uh, but that's cool. You've investigated the Brooklyn underground. Yeah, I mean, scene. Everybody... Totally. Well, um, is there anything else? Yeah, you'd like everybody's to add? got a story to tell. Me. Totally. Is there anything you'd like to add I mean, about just, you know, the biggest thing? Uh, yeah. I mean, this film was like a, you know, a passion project for me and it was just kind of just, uh, to show that, like, you know, people can put their body and health on the line for just the sake of art. And it's, you know, also metaphorical for, you know, just seeing somebody that is so inspired and just, you know, so transfixed on just making something cool that people want to watch. And, you know, I was just glad that I got to show, you know, people that weren't visiting New York and visiting these matches, you know, just give them like, I just a uh, close look to the ma madness and mayhem that takes place in these matches. Totally. Well, I'm, I'm very excited to put this on, on the big screen on March 12th. Uh, I loved it. I want to see people's reactions to it. I think even if people are squeamish and are, are resistant to the type of performance, I think sort of the inspiring message uh, throughout is going to hold people. So yeah. uh, thank you so much. Um, no, I'm going to see more from this series. And uh, I hope to uh, talk to you very soon. Great. Appreciate it.